Hello everybody, so I'm just coming up to the end of week three um, in my training schedule for the road to the new half marathon. So over this training schedule, I'm using uh, approximately 20 to 30 minute workouts, some of them are less, to get in shape for running a half marathon distance. And I'm doing a single um, 60 minute, slightly longer couple, of, slightly a little bit longer occasionally, um, steady state cardio run once a week at very low intensity um, so the aim of the whole project is to see if it is possible to uh, train effectively for a half marathon distance and endurance event using uh, interval and resistance training uh, methods that last that are not time consuming or um, cause a lot of stress on the body uh, when you're training, which endurance training does. So if you're doing long steady state runs, uh, long endurance runs, uh, training sessions, it causes a lot of free lateral damage, a lot of damage to your arteries, uh, your heart. And if not done, if you overtrain, uh, it's potentially fatal or potentially um, life-threatening. Um, so I'll come off this project just at the end of having a... Um, a small surgical operation uh, which took me out of action which meant I weren't allowed to exercise for a three two weeks um, but it was actually about three weeks before I started exercising again so just after that I did some blood tests the results came back from these everything is generally good so active B12 just turn it around this is our fourth life uh, swing so they give you a full-scale blood test um, fairly cheaply, it's £69 for a, a test, which gives you active BTEL, it does your ALT, which is to do with your liver function, uh, albumin, uh, your ALP, various different things, calcium, cortisol, uh, ferritin, um, various blood markers, uh, your thyroid function, and obviously your cholesterol. So I had a few things that were a little bit high, so my cholesterol was just slightly on the high side. Um, which I was expecting because I have a family history of high cholesterol, plus my sister suffers from familiar hyperlipidemia, which is essentially the inability to control how much fat your body absorbs at one time. Um, my actual LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, was relative, just borderline high. My HDL, the good cholesterol, was a little bit low, um, so I need to change my diet to sort that out. The triglycerides were also showing it's been high, which will be the thing that was taking me into the higher uh, cholesterol levels. Now, tri triglycerides are slightly can be affected by various things like eating, and I did make the mistake of having a coffee with uh, cream or a bulletproof coffee, as some people call them, um, before um, I took a couple of hours before I took the test, which may potentially have or about an hour and a half before I took the test, which may affect the triglycerides. So, uh, and then the other two things that are, were out of sync or showing high was the ALT, which is the uh, liver function, and the ferritin level, which is uh, shows you iron in your blood. Now, what um, both of these are indicators are of are, one, uh, the ferritin can indicate that you've potentially got inflammation somewhere, but also poor liver function, the ALT level, also shows potentially poor liver function. That was only just borderline high. Um, but both those markers are also, um, can be affected by surgical procedures, so anaesthetics, the trauma of going through a surgery. So I've ordered a second blood test uh, before a panic and get that done. Um, if they haven't improved, obviously I'll go see the GP and just get checked over more thoroughly. Um, in terms of training, I've, Basically, because I was coming back into it, I took used the HRV monitor to uh, measure the strength of my heart, and it's gradually getting stronger over the three weeks. So the average rating is gradually getting higher and higher each day, which allows me to indicate, um, gives me an indication of the intensity that I can train at each each morning or each uh, each time I take the test. The minute it's showing it's pretty good, so I'm sticking what I'm doing and just gradually increasing the intensity. Being a little bit hit and miss with the type of interval training and the type of um, 
in the first couple of weeks and the type of resistance training to sort of getting back into things. So I've been more structured and the weight training is now taking the uh, form of German volume training, uh, which basically allows me to train quite intensively, but at weights that aren't uh, near my maximum. So it protects my back uh, and other potential issues that I've had in the past that I don't want to aggravate. The interval training, I'm using um, Tabata training and more traditional high intensity interval training where I do uh, short spurts with longer breaks and I'm using the spinning bike and sprints to complete that. So that's a little rundown of where we are at the minute. In terms of body um, effects, uh, effects on my body, I've lost a kilo. The aim isn't weight loss, it's more about performance, but I've lost a kilo over three weeks or just over a kilo. Um, and I've dropped uh, around about 2% body fat, which is a, a decent indicator, and about an inch off my uh, midsection, which is the area where we tend to store stress hormones. So there's a little rundown of what's going on, uh, and I'll speak to you again in the next few days. See you later. Bye.